so Wonka is. Is this the movie for Christmas? Is this the, the Christmas well, I think movie? It, the yeah. family movie? I, I think it is, yes, isn't it? Yes, I presume it is going to be a huge Christmas hit. And as you've probably already seen, uh, there's two major broadsheets, one uh, uh, by someone of this parish, who have gone full five stars on the film. So the critics seem to be absolutely loving it. There are no critics, Mark, no, no, apart I would, from okay. you. Uh, so uh, as, just to recap, they're basically, so it is, it is a pre-chocolate factory uh, Wonka, which he arrives, he attempts to set himself up as a, as a chocolatier, but he meets resistance at every turn. Olivia Coleman runs this guest house where he doesn't read the small print and immediately finds himself in prison for the next umpteen years, having yep. to do the laundry in order to pay off his bills. Um, you've got the, the, the chief of police who's uh, in, interested in the, his... The whole the whole place is being run by this kind of chocolate cartel, this chocolate mafia cartel, and then you've got um, Rowan Atkinson as Father Julius, who is a, a chocolate hoarding priest, and another of Rowan Atkinson's. I wonder if he took a lot of persuading to be a priest. Yes, we like a slightly sinister cleric. Is Rowan Atkinson busy? So, um, the film has songs written by Neil Hannon, a divine comedy um, of whose work I am I've always been a fan. And actually, one of the things that's weird is that hearing the songs you i think you can hear you can hear them almost as divine song by neil yeah yes because one of the things about his songs is they've always had a, a sort of a, a, an, a theatrical kind of slightly slightly removed performance element i mean i really like them i know some people if you don't like divine comedy you really don't like divine comedy but i've always found him to be a very interesting songwriter agree, yeah. so i think that kind of works rather well and then a uh, score by joby tolbert um so during that interview, um, Paul King says, you know, origin story aren't necessarily what you want. Will, you know, do we need um, young Wonka? And course, that's the way they, they pitched it. And you said that what happened was you went in thinking, I don't particularly need a, a Willy Wonka origin that, story. That was my mindset going in, yes. And then 10 minutes in, you thought, oh, no, I absolutely do. So here's what I feel about it. I think... The performances are very good. I think Olivia Coleman and Tom Davis are a great double act, particularly when he gets into the Lederhosen, which is a plot point which is kind of too too complicated to explain. Yes, it's fine, it works. But essentially, there is there is a wearing of Lederhosen, which is done to great comic effect. And Olivia Coleman, I think, is is very funny. Kayla Lane is terrific as Noodle. I realised, of course, that I had seen her before in Chris Morris's uh, The Day Shall Come. She's clearly a star. And actually, she... Yeah she pretty much dominates the stuff that she's in because she's so confident and she's so, um, you know, she's such a sort of uh, a, a captivating presence. Yeah. that she, she and Timothy Chalamet together are very good. Yeah. Um, and I think that Hugh Grant is, well, Hugh Grant is never anything less than funny now because at the end of Paddington, Paddington 2 is stolen by Hugh Grant and the end of Paddington 2, the credit sequence when he does the, the theatrical performance in the prison is probably one of the you know one of the one of the great endings. I did have an issue with the the Hugh Grant CG effect thing because the way they do it is it's it's Hugh Grant big head you know tiny tiny body and I never felt that the the CG settled down to make me fit. I never I always had a problem with whatever was going on with this. I kept thinking, I was looking at it thinking. What is it? They CG'd his face onto what? How have they, you know, and which, whatever the answer is, I thought that that was a bit wobbly. You or not? No, didn't no. Care okay, to me fine. At all, no. But he is very. He's an Oompa Loompa, so he's going to look weird. So. Yeah, no, but there's something. Well, Oompa Loompa looking weird is fine, but Oompa Loompa, Oompa Loompa looking G CG weird is. Anyway, I, I found that distracting, but I think Hugh Grant is really. I mean, he has absolutely found his metier in this period of his career. And when you're doing sort of farcical, pompous characters, he is absolutely, you know, the go-to guy. Um, as far as Chalamet is concerned, I th I'm i not a big Timothy Chalamet fan, I have to be honest. And, okay, so this is a role which Gene Wilder absolutely owned. Johnny Depp, I think, I never, never really got the, the, the Johnny Depp thing. And I think, that Timothy Chalamet is somewhere in between the two of them. I still think, and obviously it's a generational thing, Gene Wilder will always be, you know, my screen incarnation of that character. I was surprised by how much he is a song and dance man. I didn't know that, you know, because I didn't have seen him in singing and dancing. But I think he's fine. I think he's fine. Um, you thought he was great. No, because... I was just surprised by how much I was enjoying the whole thing. Yeah, so of course, yeah. when it starts, there's a ship that's arriving. I mean, 
goodness knows where it's arriving because it appears to be France. But and he's swinging around the mast. But yeah, he's swinging around the mast. But when he gets there, it's full of kind of weird. Look, everyone speaks with a London accent, so it's clearly not France, but it clearly is France. But then all the police are dressed as they come from Italy. So it does, kind of doesn't really matter. But the very first thing that happens is Chalamet is atop the mast and singing. And I was thinking, oh, OK, he's gonna, <laughs> here we go. He's going to start singing. And then anyway, he arrives and I thought, no, I'm actually I'm actually really enjoying this. And I yeah. thought it was laugh out loud funny. And he is, he, you know, he's. I didn't know. I didn't know he could sing and dance, and he can sing and dance. And so, I because I was laughing out loud much more than I thought I would. I thought, okay. oh, this is this okay. is good. No, fine. You know? All right. So, to to answer the very specific questions that you brought up, do we need a young Wonka? You say, you know, ten minutes. Apparently, in, we yes. Do. I thought I don't know. Okay, maybe. I mean, maybe we can get away with a young Wonka. You said it's not cynical, and what you meant was that the film isn't doesn't have cynicism in it. Although, you know, one has to admit that any version of kind of, you know, revisiting a popular character, there's a, there's a certain kind of movie-making cynicism. Oh, yes, in, you know, of so, course. So I'm not sure that it's completely without cynicism. You mentioned the spirit of Poppins. There is very specifically visual quotation of Poppins. That is absolutely undeniable. I think talking about the spirit of Poppins is a very high bar. And I don't think it's on the same level as that. I'm not no, saying it's not as good as, but no, but but I, you know, I think I think it channeled elements of Poppins, but I didn't, I'm I'm not quite on the same page as. So I'm just trying to sort of work mm -hmm. through this methodically. And I thought it was very funny that when you said that thing, but I think it's a critique of capitalism. And I couldn't quite tell when when you said it, you said it as a as a, as a gag or a thing. But of course, that thing, the greedy and the needy, of course, that's actually comes up a whole number of the times. whole number of times, and is sort of at the center of it. So in the end, I think this. I love the Paddington movies. I thought this was fine. I'm slightly surprised by how well it's gone down. Um, but then quite often I don't quite get things. Um, and I, I thought it was fine. I wasn't swept off my feet. I wasn't taken out of myself. I thought the individual elements were really, you know, well done. And there are plenty of laughs. And I do think the Simon, Simon Farnaby uh, security guard character is... Centre of the film. Yeah, and there's but there's a lovely kind of pantomime uh, silhouette show of him eating the chocolate and having the various layers of what's going on in the chocolate. And I thought that was actually one of the funniest sequences, in the, one of the best sequences in the film, in which you sort of, you know, it is literally a silhouette show of him going through all these stages of emotion as this chocolate, which yeah. is a party in a chocolate, works out. I could have done with more of that personally but i think it's fine you think it's really good two of the major broadsheets here think it's five stars it's got hit written all over it has it has but it doesn't touch me at a heart level the only this is slightly preposterous Go but ahead. when it starts and roald dahl's name comes up at the top it just rem oh yeah that's right terrible anti-Semite. I remember, I remember all this stuff. You know, I remember in the same way that I cannot look at H.P. Lovecraft ever again without yeah, knowing yeah. all of the things that he thought. Yeah, no. So you have to sort of, you have to park that to one side. As David Baddiel has said, you know, Roald Dahl, one of the greatest children's yeah. writers, and also well, had some horrible you, opinions. Yeah, you have to, I opened my PhD with a quote from Lovecraft. And you know, I mean, I didn't know at the time, but it's like, yeah, but so what do I do? Do I go, you know, I, it was, yeah. But now you know what you know. Thanks very much for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed watching it as much as we enjoyed making it. While you're here, check out all the other videos because they're cool too, aren't they? They are. And if you want to keep up to date with everything Kermit and Mayo's take, then check out our social channels. I mean, why wouldn't you? I mean, I, I would. I have done. Excellent.